you give in to the social policing, you believe that these men will love you if you provide for them, if you take care of them, just build with them when in reality you're building them up, you're going to see firsthand why they were broke in the first place. You will learn that men are broke for a reason. And honestly, all these women sharing their stories is enough for us to realize the dangers of broke men. Hey bestie, welcome to the Spoiled Girly Support Group where we talk about how to get that bag while also securing your own bag. I'm your host Elle and let's get into it. On today's episode, we are talking about once again how you should stop dating broke men part two because apparently one video wasn't enough and y'all are still out here dating broke men, okay? Like, can we not? We are reacting to a video of a woman who says that she is dating a broke guy, quote unquote. And we will also watch videos of other women reacting to that video and talking about their personal experiences of dating broke men and how it didn't really work out well for them. Okay, because apparently broke men are most often insecure men who will bring you down. We will also talk about the dangers of dating men with high external locus of control. So we have a lot to get into today, but before we get into it, I need you to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell so you never miss a spoiled girly episode. With that being said, let's get into it. I'm dating a broke guy and it really, really sucks because he has the best personality, hands down, I have so much fun with him and but it's like it's gotten to the point where right now I'm not doing as financially well as I normally do so in the past like we have taken trips but I've paid for the trips I've paid for the hotel I've paid for the rental of the car if we've been to concerts I've paid for the tickets he does what he can when he can but he doesn't do enough. You know what I'm She lost me at he has a great personality, but I'm not doing as financially well and I'm paying for everything. He doesn't have a great personality. If he's fine with you doing all of that, that's not a great personality. Okay? You mean he doesn't mistreat you? He doesn't talk down to you? He doesn't do all these bad things to you? You think he has a great personality because of that? If you are financially not doing well after being with a man, because now you are paying for two adults, the maintenance and leisure activities of two adults, you are subsidizing this man's existence in a patriarchy, why wouldn't he be nice to you? Why wouldn't he have a great personality? Let's get into this comment. Someone said, My man was listening and said he got a great personality because he got no bills. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I can relate. I feel like I do have a great personality when I have no bills. Valid. Let's keep watching. I'm saying, but he does what he can when he can. But it's gotten to the point where it definitely sucks because I'm not doing as well financially. I can't afford to do things for two people. I can't even afford to do things just myself right now. So because I can't afford to do things for two, we actually don't do anything. We haven't done anything. Like if I'm being for real, for honest, like in September, for my birthday month, he did he does celebrate me around those times though. He does celebrate me around the holidays. He does celebrate me around my birthday. We already talked about this in this class. It's called his lifestyle is your lifestyle. His lifestyle is your lifestyle. And it means that whatever this man's lifestyle is before you date him, that will be the lifestyle that you will live. Doesn't matter if you have a completely different lifestyle all by yourself. You are going big on your birthday. Day, you're going on all these trips you have all these little luxuries in your life because you yourself all by yourself you can afford it okay and then you look at a man and he can't afford to go big on his own birthday he can't afford to go on all these trips all by himself don't think that when you get together you will be still able to go big on your birthday go on all these trips that you want to go to because you've been doing that all by yourself and then you get with a man who can't do that for himself and then you think magically somehow that he will adopt your lifestyle oh he will want to go on these trips too at least pay his own way no 
Okay, she wants to bring her lifestyle into this man's lifestyle when the man couldn't even afford it all by himself when he was alone. There's a reason why he wasn't living that lifestyle before because he couldn't afford it. Okay, so you think that you're gonna bring in this new thing into his life and everything will be magical and happy and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so whenever I say date for lifestyle, not love, because you will actually be able to flourish more in love when the lifestyle that you have been accustomed to all by yourself is the same lifestyle that you are living when with a man maybe even upgraded, okay? Why would you downgrade your life to be with a man, okay? First of all, men inherently are labor, okay? You need to listen to this song called Labor by Paloma. Like, do you make me do too much labor all day, every day, therapist, mother made nothing of- Like, I can't. You need to listen to that song, like once a day on repeat, because it's true, okay? You think that you're in your 20s, your 30s, 40s, whatever, you're living your best life, you're traveling all over the place, you're eating at all the restaurants, going to brunches with your girlfriends because you have your own big girl money. You think that if you're with a man who doesn't have the same big girl money that you have, you think that you're still gonna live that same lifestyle? No, you're gonna downgrade your lifestyle. I can't, like, I'm trying to be nice. Okay, let's be nice. He does celebrate me around my birthday, but yeah, it's been October, November, December, January. So for the past four months, me and him, we just been like sitting ducks. And yeah, it just, it sucks. Like it's crazy. Cause I don't think like, I feel like females come on online and talk about like look what he bought me look what he got me look at where he this is a trend that i've been noticing is that whenever women come online and they talk about females it's because they have been subscribing to misogynistic content online you know all the rp content online there's nothing wrong with that word but it just signals to me that they have swallowed ingested and personified and have identified with the misogynistic messages that all these misogynistic males spew online. That's just a sign that they have internalized the misogyny that they have been subjected to. But I am telling you, stop listening to men online. Like we already talked about it in this class, okay? Stop taking advice from men. Like, I really appreciate how the spoiled girlies tag me in like things that they would want me to react to. But a lot of the times, y'all tag me in like talking head videos of men, okay? Like I see that it's a man like 0.1 one second I say I swipe away because I just know some BS is gonna come out of their mouths and I don't want to hear it okay I don't want that negative misogynistic content coming at me from my phone okay like you need to curate the media that you consume your phone is a portal to your future your phone is a portal to your mindset okay why would you let negative misogynistic content occupy pixels on your phone okay like just stop watching that stuff Okay, don't even react. Like there's absolutely no universe where these men will listen to your comments. Like they're not gonna self-reflect, okay? The reason why they consume low status male strategy veiled through misogynistic male content is because they lack self-awareness, okay? They're not gonna all of a sudden wake up to how much RP content is a scam that is keeping them single and miserable and depressed and offing themselves, okay? They're never gonna wake up to that, okay? It is not your task to teach them how to be a decent human being. So just stop consuming that content. So whenever I see women like this talk about females, like please stop consuming the misogynistic content and stop listening to below bare minimum effort men who will make you suffer, okay? Because you end up with a man who makes you suffer like this. I have never met a woman who is in softness, who is embodied in her femininity, who is getting everything she wants in life, come online and say females, like females this, female that. Like, can we like get some pattern recognition going? Let's keep watching. Look what he got me. Look at where he took me. It's like the ones that are dating the broke men. We don't talk about it. But it's like, no, I mean, I don't know. There has to be like a conversation about it. And it really sucks because I feel like it's kind of getting to the point where if I'm not the breadwinner or if I'm not, if I don't. Kind of backtrack a little bit. She talked about how the women who are living in softness, they post what they're getting online, like the positive treatment, the gifts, the trips, the this and the that. And I know that a lot of it is setting unrealistic expectations for other women. And it makes a lot of women who do not get that positive treatment feel bad. But I am telling you, there are women who are getting that in real life. They just don't post it. Like once you start living this type of reality where you get positive treatment from men, you get everything that you want in life, you start to see 
see a lot more of it in real life. And I don't know why. Maybe it's like you step into a new portal and that is now all that you see. And you also start to make friends with these women. And the more you get to know these people, they don't post enough. Okay, so whatever we see online, like all these positive treatment of women like there's probably only like 20 to 30 accounts of women who get a lot of engagement posting that type of stuff but i am telling you a lot of women get that in real life and they just don't post it because evil eye and like what's the point you know if you're not monetizing it why invade your own privacy like that so i totally get it why women want to be private but i am telling you it is abundant okay there is an abundant supply of women who are living their best lives and getting everything that they want in life and i know that it kind of hurts when and you're not getting that type of treatment obviously you're in discernment okay like you cannot expect the man that you're dating if he isn't earning as much to give you the same thing that a super mega high earner is giving his partner okay so just be in discernment but like we talked about here you don't need a rich man you need a generous man and if you are struggling with a man period he's not generous okay you can struggle alone like why would you struggle with a man and it seems like she wasn't even struggling alone she only started struggling when she got with this man okay she's like now i am not doing as well financially meaning she was doing well financially before him okay like i can't let's keep watching if i don't somehow make my life lead me up to making income for two i don't think that i'm gonna be able to be with this person and it just really sucks because this man is in his divine feminine receiving energy like it's the woman who is thinking this way she is now thinking, if I cannot make enough income for two people, I cannot date this guy. The man should be thinking like that. He should be thinking, if I cannot make enough income for two people, I cannot date her. Like, I need to do better for myself. Like, I'm struggling right now. Like, what am I going to do? He should be thinking about that. The reason why he has such a great personality is because he doesn't have to think about that. I can't. It's he, like I said, he has like the best personality hands down. So I'm on here to ask, what do I do? And don't be too cold. Like, don't be too. Dump him. Leave him. Take all your money, replenish your savings, pay off your credit cards, take yourself on a trip, get yourself something nice, and take this as a lesson, okay? And I'm not trying to be cold. I'm just telling you what everyone else is thinking, that you can do better, and you already were doing better all by yourself, so why would you downgrade your lifestyle to be with a man, okay? The reason why we get partners to begin with is to upgrade our lifestyles, okay? And simply being with a woman upgrades a man's lifestyle, okay? So all these men saying like, Well, why would I want to be with a freeloader? Like, all you females just want to take our money. I'm like, okay. And honestly, I don't even want to combat these statements anymore. Like, okay, you believe that, good luck. Okay, because the reason why men are so market driven is because they have to respond to us women, okay? We set the market, we set the standard, and if they don't like it, they can walk away. We are not haggling anymore. Like, okay, you believe that, bye. And I say a lot of this with kindness. I was kind of harsh, but I don't know. Sometimes people need tough love or just plain truth spelled out like that. I don't know, but it just so frustrates me. She seems like she has her shit together. She has her finances together. She desires a certain lifestyle and she already gave that to herself. And she actually managed to give it to this man too. So I just don't understand like why. And I really think it all comes down to consuming all these misogynistic content and having guy friends who brainwash you into believing all these beliefs that benefit only men, okay? There's a reason why I tell you all the things I tell you, okay? Like, I can't. So that's my advice. Dump him. Don't be too rude. You know what I'm saying? Because I had my narcissist ex-boyfriend who made way more money than I did. And, you know, that wasn't the answer. Like, so it's like, where is the common ground? And this brings us back to you don't need a rich man. You need a generous man. And one thing you need to keep in mind is that men of all income ranges have the ability and capacity to hurt you. Okay? So when you're a woman, number one, you date for a lifestyle. Don't even consider men whose lifestyles you don't admire, okay? So now you have that baseline lifestyle. So men, they come in a range. So let's say your lifestyle is here. You cannot date men who are in this range. You can only date men who are in this range and up, okay? So that's your range. Within that range of middle to up, you're going to consider a lot of men. And within that range, 
There's men who are narcissistic and not narcissistic. There's men who are generous and not generous. There's men who have great character, not a great character. The world is your oyster. This scarcity mindset thinking and very limited thinking that- Well, if he has a lot of income, he's narcissistic by default. I think it's just very limited. And I think it also goes back to the women who are with non-narcissistic, generous men who have a decent amount of income. They don't post, okay? So like, we don't see that women are living that reality. And I think her problem too is that she doesn't have spoiled girly girlfriends who show her the possibilities of being with a partner who cares for you and is not narcissistic and at the same time makes a decent amount of income. Someone who doesn't drain her wallet, okay? So I respect the privacy of spoiled girlies. Like I totally understand why a lot of women wouldn't wanna share the bounties in their lives because people are mean. But I'm telling you, it is possible to be with a good man who provides for you. It is possible to be with a good man who makes a decent income. It is possible to be with a man who can fully financially support himself. So I think she experienced like a man who makes a decent amount of income who is narcissistic and then she went to the other end of the spectrum with a broke man who has a great personality. I'm sorry, but if he is draining your wallet, he doesn't have a great personality, okay? Just keep watching. Like, and obviously I do have a little bit of fear. Like if I stay with him during this whole time, and I continue to help out, is he gonna just walk away when he does better? It, it's just, uh. <gasps> Yes, he will leave. A lot of the times, the men that women build up, they leave and they pursue the type of woman or the woman that they have always wanted. Because let's think about it, okay? Men have very huge egos and very sensitive egos. And what a lot of women in their pick-me era don't realize is that when women provide for men, it hurts the men's egos. But at the same time, they needed these women to provide for them. And I don't know what it is, but men love to provide. Like, you need to internalize that men love to provide. And if they cannot provide for you, they will for someone else, okay? They all always want to feel like the macho man. So a lot of the times when high earning women get with broke men and subsidize the man's lifestyle and provide for him, a lot of times these men cheat maybe with someone else who has lower needs, someone that they can feel like a man with, okay? Like that's the vibe, like they want to feel like a man. So a lot of the women, the provider women get cheated on because the man, he still wants to provide. Like we need to like ingrain this in ourselves that men love to provide. Provide, okay, it is a service for them for us to allow them to provide Okay, it's just how it is and the earlier you accept this the earlier you move better for yourself Okay, it's so scary. It's so crazy cuz it's like I really really like him and I really 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 like Don't want to like Not be with him, but at the same time too like I'm too effing old to do this like I've already spun around this block a few times like <sighs> you need to like yourself more than you really really like him okay you need to love yourself more than you love him okay we live in a system that favors these men and then you're gonna care for the losers in the system that already favors them okay let's get into the comments he should be dating the indeed app indeed dating a broke man isn't the problem his lack of wanting to be better himself for you is concerning no effort speaks volumes Exactly. Okay. I was dating a broke man as well with a great personality. I broke up because if I'm able to work multiple jobs, he should be able to as well. Exactly. Like, what is it with women dating men in their divine feminine receiving energy? What is it with that? Like, and I think it all boils down to how the bar is in hell, literally subterranean at the core of the center of the earth, that we think that if men do not mistreat us, do not emotionally, physically mistreat us, we think that, wow, I found a unicorn, wow. And this is the goal of all these malicious men who mistreat women and simp police other men from treating women well. This is what it's come down to. You think that just because he does the bare minimum of not emotionally and physically mistreating you, you think he's a great guy and he doesn't have to do what he's supposed to do. You think that it's perfectly fine that you work all these multiple jobs while he sits at home playing video games and you're the one paying for everything, okay? They have literally driven the bar express lane straight into hell, okay? Over it. There are plenty of good men.
okay? You don't need to settle for this below bare middle effort man who he doesn't physically or emotionally mistreat you and automatically he's a great guy. Uh, no, that's the bare minimum, okay? That's the bare minimum to be eligible. And honestly, he's not even eligible if he's broke and he's relying on you to finance his life. Always go after a generous man, rich or broke, get someone generous, willing, and is naturally always putting in effort. I would say always go after a generous man, rich or non-rich, but broke? No. Let's get into the realities of dating a broke man. That same mentality is what landed me into single motherhood, okay? And I'm not gonna say it's gonna happen to you, but let me tell you what happened to me. Picture this, okay? I was 23 years old, going to school, I had a really good job, um, no financial responsibility, like I was at my parents' house, not paying any rent. Life was a party. It was built for living, not surviving at the time, okay? This is just me in the world, doing whatever the I wanted to do. Next thing you know it, I meet this man who comes fresh out my state with a mutual friend that I've known for such a long time. He's a little bit older than me. He tells me he's going through like whatever situation, we click right away, we're best friends. Now I love this personality. Now I had dated some scuzz buckets like back in the day and my perception of men was slightly traumatized. So he was everything, he was a bee's knees. We had a summer love and we had a blast, but I was always taking out my wallet. He's like, you know, I'm going through this, whoop -de -whoop, when I get my good job because he has all these skills, like, you know, I got you. And I had no responsibilities, so I was okay with that. We went everywhere, okay? Everywhere, every restaurant, here, there. We were living, okay? It was a great summer. Again, I was the one that was always taking out my wallet. So now all of a sudden, we're in love, okay? And now I had a credit card that had a 10 grand limit, zero balance. I'm keeping up, next thing you know, swipe, 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 swipe. Next thing you know, a girl's 23 years old, 10 grand in debt. But I'm in love. I love his personality. Next thing you know it, we shack up. We start living together. Now I got, you know, real people bills, okay? He starts that great job. Things are going great. Next thing you know it, I'm like, hey, he's paying for stuff, but I'm still also paying for just as much stuff. Next thing you know what comes from being in the house and being in love? Baby. Next thing you know it, he's like, hey, you know, you don't really have to work anymore so i quit my job and because he has this great job next thing you know it he loses that job next thing you know it um living off of just our unemployment me taking out my wallet again now a baby is on the way now i'm i threw my own baby shower with dollar tree i don't i got this mini little car payment from that same credit card that i had and now i don't owe 10 grand i owe like 13 grand next thing you know it i get two jobs at eight months pregnant and work up to the very end and that same that's okay with watching you take out your wallet will be that same that's okay with watching you work two jobs while you're pregnant next thing you know it the baby's here and i am go back to work four weeks after having a c-section that same was okay with watching that and however you're treated while you're pregnant it just leaves a nasty resentment taste towards you Next thing you know, I'm working two jobs, trying to pay for expensive ass formula, and that same dude is paying the bare minimum. Because you had mentioned in the video that he has responsibilities, and you have those same responsibilities. And let me tell you how that right there will get you up in the game. And whether you like to think so or not, it demasculinizes a man to know that you're out there working and he's in the house. Next thing you know what, he thinks I'm cheating on him all the time. Next thing you know what, we're arguing okay it is miserable and i have this resentment towards everything that happened and i'm pretty much the one that's paying for everything fast forward it's the finances it's the arguing and everything is just a haywire of a mess and then you just start getting this mentality like damn like i already do this by myself i could really just do this by myself next thing you know it you're with a child and you start doing that by yourself and the same that watched you open up your wallet during this entire time through dinner when in all reality you saying that you see other girls post their boyfriends doing cute little stuff and you have to stay quiet because in all reality some women are are okay with that and i don't knock them they're okay with being the providers and some women just want a provider and that is okay too the devil does not come in the that red 
horns and the freaking pitchfork. He comes as everything that you've ever wanted. Let's get into the comments. Same, but thank goodness we didn't have a baby together. I'll tell anyone, don't fall in love with potential because it doesn't pay the bills. Easy for them to walk away when you're the one who built them up and made them who they are. Yeah. I always say that building with men is inevitable. You're always going to build with a man. Like even the most successful men, they are still building. Like they will build until the day they die. Okay. So they're always building. So it's inevitable that you're going to build with a man, but never build up a man from nothing, from scratch. Okay. No, there's a difference between building up a man and building with a man. Know the difference. You basically told my story minus the baby. Ran me into so much debt. I filed bankruptcy at 23 or 24. I'm still rebuilding. The girl in the original video, she talks about how she's not doing as financially well. So she's heading this way. Okay bankruptcy another video never date men below you never ever date men who are below you and i don't mean to sound classist okay both of my parents literally grew up in the soviet union a classist system so don't come for me now here's the deal you think that jealousy only exists between women? Well, you're wrong, okay? I used to suffer from the Dan Humphrey syndrome, meaning I thought that I was Serena, so I would only go out with Dan Humphreys, okay? And I used to date this guy who was super, super nice. And then one day, randomly, my agent called me and was like, you booked a really, really big job, okay? So I ended up being on set quite a lot. And then uh, one day, randomly, that guy, the Dan Humphrey, started being super, super rude to me, saying, oh, all you do all day, you just twirl around in your little dresses in front of the film director that's your life you're such a nepo baby you're so privileged you're this and that and i'm like I, I'm, it's not my fault that you're not you know what i mean and the, the, the point my point is this is that if you date somebody a man who is below you eventually like i look you cannot decide who your heart likes okay i'm a firm believer in true love okay but in the end if a guy is below you, eventually he will start becoming jealous of you because men need to feel successful. Men need to feel like protectors of the family, okay? And if he feels like you are superior to him, he's going to be so jealous of you and it's going to be your fault, okay? He's going to blame you for it, okay? And that's my point. So never, ever, ever date men below you, okay? Have fun. They want you to be smart, but never smarter than them. Successful, but never better than them. They will project their insecurities by downplaying your achievements. Like, there is never a good reason to surround yourself with insecure people, insecure friends, insecure family members, and most importantly, insecure partners. Okay? You will never be enough for the wrong person. And sometimes you're too much for them. Okay? You're too smart. You're too successful. You're too rich you're too bougie, you're too luxurious, you're too this, you're too that. I, like I always say, date for lifestyle, not love, because if you have a certain lifestyle and this man can't keep up with that, okay, he will always either drag you down to his level or drag you up to his level, or just maintain the level that you're at, okay? A lot of the times, you will adopt the man's lifestyle, okay? It is very rare that it works out that the man adopts the woman's lifestyle without any detriment to her. Problem with a lot of men is they don't want to be with you, they want to be you. It's giving kitty envy. Also, don't choose someone who isn't attractive because you believe they'll be more loyal. You give an ugly guy a chance, he thinks he rules the world. Liter I swear to God. Because they got a hot girl, they can be horrible. Like, you're still ugly, though. Can't change that. Need I say more? You shouldn't be humble about choosing the person you have a relationship with because they will try to earn self-worth by ruining you. Exactly. Like, what is it with people's obsession with making women humble? Like, watch this class here. We already talked about it. But like, the reason why a lot of people are so obsessed with keeping you humble is because your mere existence is humbling them. And the reason why men are obsessed with keeping women humble is because by default, women's existence humble them, okay? So everything is projection. This is so true. They will think you're high maintenance and a snob when it's really just your lifestyle. Always date in your league or above you. Exactly. Date for lifestyle, not love. Because if you date for lifestyle, you are more likely to flourish in love, okay? Like, love doesn't pay the bills. Love doesn't pay for Pilates. Love doesn't make sure that you're not overworked. Love doesn't give you the lifestyle that you want. Okay, put the necessities first. Okay, and it's one thing to afford your lifestyle all on your own, but can this man afford your lifestyle too? Because by default, men are labor, men are risk. All this money that you're making right now to afford your lifestyle, when you're with a man, you never know what's gonna happen to you. 
okay? You can lose your income because now all of a sudden you have to further this man's lineage and birth a child for him and be out of the workforce, okay? Men are labor and men are risk. It doesn't matter if you can afford your lifestyle now. You need to make sure that he can afford your lifestyle too. This is true even with friends. I try to get along with these types of people, but their insecurity shows and will make you their insecurity punching bag, sadly. It turns off a lot of people when they find someone living their own dream life. And it triggers them even more when your dream life is what they want to be their dream life. You just can't be around people who are not in the same level as you. And it's not about money. It's about peace with yourself. If you're around people, who are not at peace with themselves and at peace with what they have done in their lives, it's just not gonna work out for you, okay? That's why I firmly believe that you don't need to be friends with everybody, okay? Not everybody will be your friend and that's okay because you're special. Your circumstance is special. Your own version of your dream life is special. So you can't expect other people to resonate with that. And like I said, when you are living in your light, you expose the darkness in a lot of people and it just makes them feel a certain type of way, okay? They feel rattled, they feel exposed. They're literally like, ah, I'm melting. Like whenever they're around your presence because your light exposes their darkness, okay? So you can't be around insecure people, point blank, period. People don't understand it's necessary to take yourself seriously. Realizing your own position and values improved my dating life so much. Exactly. Date for lifestyle, not love. Date for values, not love, okay? Because like, let's get back to the original video. She's talking about how she's worried that she has to provide for two people, not just one, if she wants to be in a relationship with this guy. Seems to me that financial independence, financial stability is very important to her. That's one of her values. She values financial stability at the very least, but the man doesn't, okay? So you cannot be with someone whose values don't align with yours, okay? Like it's just so simple. If financial stability is important to you as it should be, why are you with someone for whom that is not important basic super basic we've all seen the video of that girl that was like oh i'm dating a broke guy but he's really nice okay let's talk about it let's talk about it no hate to her she's beautiful but let's talk about it because she asked for advice um ma'am ma'am why are you paying for his vacations what does that mean um she made a follow-up video for the record saying that he has a good job it's just he has bad luck but then he doesn't save for a rainy day so if you have bad luck, why are you not saving for a rainy day? For the record, I don't have a problem with dating a guy who has financial hardship. But why am I dating someone, or why are you rather, why are you dating someone who is complacent in his financial hardship? It is one thing for him to be in financial hardship, but to be trying to work through that, it's another thing for him to make that your obligation. The way that I know that he kind of made it your obligation is when you said, I feel like I need to work for two people. I mean, it's not your husband. It's not your husband, okay? You don't need to be working for anyone who is not your husband or your children. Leave this job of supporting a man who will eventually leave you when he gets financial stability. Let's talk about this and let's get into some definitions first. Like what is locus of control? Locus of control is basically where you attribute things in your life. So the people who have high internal locus of control, they attribute events in their lives to internal things like themselves, what they did, what they believed in, like how they did things, how often they did things, like everything is about the self. So that's internal locus of control. External locus of control is when people attribute things to luck or the actions of other people, just like things outside of their control, okay? I have very high internal locus of control. And from experience, I have very little patience for partners with high external locus of control. I can never handle them as a partner and it's never gonna work out, okay? Like I just know that in myself from experience, like that's me, it's never gonna change. It drives me nuts being with someone who has high external locus of control, like I can't. And obviously having high internal locus of control has downsides. Like people with high internal locus of control, they tend to be more depressed, more anxious, and it makes sense because you attribute everything to yourself. So when things don't work out, you blame yourself. Okay, so it's not like a completely great thing to be, but it is also tied to success in the material physical world. Because apparently when you take radical ownership of your life, things tend to work in your favor. Fancy that, okay? So if you, as a high internal locus control of girly, you cannot be dating high external locus of control men, okay? You can't be with someone who attributes everything to everyone else and doesn't take ownership of their own actions, okay? 
He talks about how he's unlucky. The economy. Oh, other people did this. He's blaming everything to everything and everyone else except himself. You will never thrive and vibe with a man like that because he will never want to take responsibility for anything. Okay? And because he doesn't take responsibility for things happening in his life, now who will have to? You. You will now take responsibility for everything that he is not taking responsibility for. Like, let that sink in. He thinks it's amazing that somehow all his bills are always paid. He's going on all these nice trips thanks to you. Okay? Everything works out for him. He's in his divine feminine receiving energy lucky girl syndrome era. Everything works out for him because you make it work out for him. So all the no nuance Nellies and the below bare minimum low effort men who tell the spoiled girlies that we're shallow for avoiding broke men like the plague when they don't realize that it is literally a strategy for our survival at the very least and a strategy for us to thrive and vibe and enjoy life at the most. And honestly, I don't want to explain anymore. Every time someone tells you that you're this, you're that, you're shallow, you're a gold digger, blah, blah, blah. I am all that. Stay mad annoying. Anyway, to drive the point home, let me read you this quote from this book that I just finished. It's called Lucky Red. And in the book, the narrator talks about her dad who has a high external locus of control and he always called himself unlucky when him being unlucky was a series of impulsive and bad decision making. He called himself unlucky, but the losing hands dealt him were too frequent and too numerous to be mere turns of fate. There's more to this life than luck, even bad luck. And surprise, surprise, her father left her destitute and fending for herself. And eventually she becomes a sporting woman working in a brothel. Like at this point, high external locus of control men, they're an ick. If he can't take ownership of the most important aspects of his own life, you're gonna have to. And if you don't, you are in for a world of hurt. And obviously there are a lot of things outside of our control, but with what little we have control over, we're gonna do our best with what little we have control over, okay? And so I tell you this, you have control over who gets to be your partner. It is an honor to be with you. And if you give in to the social police saying you believe that these men will love you if you provide for them, if you take care of them, just build with them when in reality you're building them up, you're gonna see firsthand why they were broke in the first place. You will learn that men are broke for a reason. And honestly, all these women sharing their stories is enough for us to realize the dangers of broke men. But if you want to prove us wrong, so be it. That's all I have for you today. I just wanted to let you know that you have so much inherent worth and value in a world that is hell-bent on devaluing you. Now get that bag, bestie. <laughs>